Oh my gosh, my hair. Yeah, we are live now. <laughs> Hello, people. Hello. Um, today we're doing um compliment getter fragrances. Um, because those our fragrances um, people enjoy. Oh shoot! Okay. I just... Do you need to close the tab on the YouTube? There we go. Let's do it like that. All right. Should we wait till more people get in? How do we want to do this? We don't have to make it super long, so we could like do the live like as if it's a video, and then people can watch it back. All right. It's kind right. of early, so like. Some people might not be able to make it this early, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, like, All right people. Yeah. Um, we got comp five <clears throat> compliment getter fragrances for women, and then Lewis has five for men. Yeah. So, Hell yeah. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, so, yeah. You want to start us off, Lewis? Yeah. We'll just All do right. like, we'll go back and forth. So, I'll do one, you do one. So a lot of the ones I'm going to be talking about, I don't actually own anymore because I've kind of moved on from them. Um, I find that a lot of the things I like now, they don't really get compliments. So I kind of um, don't get as many compliments these days. This is one that I bought in the last few months and it does get compliments. So this is Lund van Lom Sport. And I've been wearing this a lot to work. That's probably why it's had so many. And I've nearly run out of this. And it's had compliments, and I would recommend it because although it's likable enough to get attention, it's also um, complex and kind of old schooly enough to like appeal to someone who's into fragrances like me and some of the people like say on Dan stream. So it's like uh, kind of like old school meets modern. So there's some uh, more old school elements in there. So there's like um, a very modern esque uh, oak moss. Uh, with lemon and lavender so it's kind of like a freshy and um but it has like a modern vibe as well like a sporty vibe and um yeah so i really recommend this one i've told people about this a lot um but i think if you want something that's uh modern and likable but also like has a bit of an old school vibe i would definitely recommend fellas check out L lan van lom sport it's really cheap as well i've got it at tj maxx <laughs> That's good that it's cheap. I always love cheap. Yeah. Okay, let's see. We got... All right, so this one is Dulce and Gabbana Dulce Garden. And this one is a sweet coconut fragrance. I'm sure most people know about this one by now. It garners so many compliments. It is juicy, sweet. There's plumeria in here. There's vanilla. It's a good spring, summer transition fragrance. So like the warmer weather, it just kind of sings on your skin. It's coconutty and it makes me happy and it smells really good. So it gets a lot of compliments. So that's Dulce uh, Garden by Dulce and Gabbana. That sounds really nice because I have a co-worker and she doesn't usually wear perfume, but she was wearing one recently that had coconut in it. It was like very coconutty, And I didn't say anything, but I was like thinking that she smelled really good. So I can see why that would coconut's be. Coconut's a good smell. Yeah, I can see why that would be good. And if you've got vanilla in there, it's like a sweet vanilla scent. All right, yeah. next one I'm going to talk about. I don't own this anymore. This is Dior Home Intense. I don't know if you've tried this, Kay, but Yeah, like, that one's really good. Yeah. Uh, men's Iris Fragrance. Um, for quite a while, this was basically my signature scent. Um, I went through three 50ml bottles, and I bought a 120ml bottle, and wow. I got rid of it because I just fell out of love with it. It's crazy because I thought I found my signature scent, but I fell out of love with it. But because I wore it so much, it was kind of, and I oversprayed it, I was bound to get some compliments with it. And it was uh, iris and basically iris and chocolate. Uh, cho Cocoa's not listed. It's listed in the original, but it does uh, go into the intense as well. So you get like a little bit of fruitiness in the opening, maybe bergamot or pear is listed with some lavender. 
and uh, there's a muskiness, a uh, musk mallow is how it's, uh, or anbrette is how it's listed. And then a massive amount of iris. So it's like a, uh, a iris heavy fragrance with like cocoa underneath it. And when you wear it, it's like a sweet cloud, like a sweet chocolate iris cloud. And um, because it's so strong, that's probably why I got compliments on it because people kind of, they couldn't help but smell it. So if they liked it, they would like comment, oh, you smell good. So um, if you want something, guys, if you want something that's got iris in it, so it's kind of unique, you're going to stand out a bit. Um, and you want something strong that will get compliments, Dior Home Intense. That's that cool. one's a good one, yeah. yeah. And it's it's unisex-ish too. Mm -hmm. so. I agree, yeah, yeah. Totally yeah. pull it off. Um, hi, Kai. Uh, he says good evening. So it's late good for evening. him in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next for me, I mean, y'all can be haters all you want, but you know you've smelled her before, and she definitely, if you wear this fragrance right, you're gonna get compliments for sure. Um, this is Lavia Bell, the original one. Super duper strong, um, super duper popular. Like a lot of people like this fragrance. So you're going to smell it um, when you go out and about probably. And you'll know what you're smelling because she's unique. She is a fragrance that starts off with like black currant that almost gives a blackberry syrup vibe and then there's vanilla so you're like eating ice cream and then the base is um like woody pine um so you're kind of uh sitting by a tree eating ice cream with blackberry syrup on it and that's what i get from this it's a little bit powdery um so that might be why some people kind of hate it but it really does give compliments like it, it's sweet it's long lasting and yeah so love you about from lancome yeah i've smelled oh sorry oh, Kat, getting a little bit of feedback and getting echo when i talk uh oh it's gone yeah i've smelled that i sampled it in the early days when i was just trying out different women's fragrances it's very very likable i mean people hate on it but then again like so many people wear it and love it though it's you can't deny that it's at least likable um and although I sampled it, I'm sure I've smelled it outside of that. I must have done. I must have smelled it like just sort of out and about living my life. And I think it's a good one. I would definitely recommend it for somebody who like wants compliments. So, yeah. Uh, my next one is, again, I got so sick and tired of this one that I don't own this anymore. This is Bleu de Chanel EDP. This is, K. Okay, this is kind of similar to La Vie Belle in like, this is kind of like the men's equivalent in that people are going to say, oh, this is boring it's obnoxious it's generic the thing with that one is i didn't find it that way at all um i wore it a lot in 2020 like similar to dior home intense it was like a signature for a while um and it's not it's i guess it's kind of generic in the way it's set up so you have like citruses of like some incense and patchouli in the base but the way it comes across is so incredibly like piercing and like like it grabs the attention that it, it, it's not boring just because of the way the notes come across. So you have like a really piercing citrusy grapefruit uh, with a very smoky incense, which makes it come across really musky. And the EDP specifically is the one people like. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I wore. And I got so many compliments. I got at least 15 to 20 compliments for this one. There were times when a girl would smell it and she would like call her boyfriend over to smell me. I'd get multiple compliments in the same day. I would get the same person give me more than one compliment for men, women of different ages. It's like universally loved that one. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you want something that's attention grabbing, interesting to wear, um, but also very likable and gets compliments, I'd recommend Bleu de Chanel EDP, the Eau de Parfum. Um, I just have to say, Phil, thank you. Um, how do I don't know how to pull up comment? Oh, yes, I do. Let's oh, pull sorry. it up. 
Hi, Kay and Lewis. Hope you get some positive traction with your live streams. I do believe you have something positive to offer. True knowledge and passion for fragrances. That's really sweet. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> um, Fragrance in, in Fur says, Happy Saturday, Kay and Lou. Happy Saturday. Same to you. All right, let's... All right, next. I'm just going to go with this one. All right, so Olympia from Paco Rabanne. Um, chances are this is another one that you've probably smelled, but this one is super likable, garners lots of compliments. So Olympia EDP from Paco Rabanne is... A vanilla fragrance with orange blossom, jasmine, and salt. So she's like a salty um, vanilla taffy or like a nougat or something. And um, so you could wear this year round because of the salt. It gives it a beachy type of vibe. So like the summertime, um, it would work good for summer and winter because of that vanilla it's gourmand so and then spring because it's got white flowers in it so yeah great compliment getter year-round fragrance that you can wear all the time olympia from paco Rabanne. awesome i've not even smelled that but i know paco Rabanne. they're usually like sweet and strong and like, like grab yeah. your attention so i wouldn't be surprised next one it, again there's only one in this list i actually own so this is another one i don't own this is Amouage Reflection Man. And I wore this a lot in the early days. I used to have loads of samples of it. And people compare it a little bit to La Mole by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I kind of get it. They come across like similar. They're both kind of sweet and powdery. Um, but where La Mole is like vanilla and lavender, this one is more white florals. So it's always kind of, it's always kind of recommended as a great white floral fragrance for men. Um, which I agree with because I think it has jasmine in it, but as a whole, it doesn't come across as like super white floral or anything like that because it's very smooth and um, very sweet, uh, sweet floral for men. Um, some of the compliments I got were like on a bus, <laughs> like I remember a girl saying, "Oh, you smell good. You smell like like uh, over in England we have hot cross buns, which are like like a dessert thing." But she said, I smelled like them, and she liked it. <laughs> and then I had someone else at work who, he's like, uh, I was working with a guy, and he was like the type of guy you never thought would ever give you a compliment on a fragrance. Like, he wouldn't compliment another man sort of thing. Um, but he shouted over to me. He was like, oh, you smell really good today. And I was like, oh, cool. So I do remember getting a lot of compliments for that one. I think it's just different to what people are used to smelling because it smells very expensive and... Um, very i don't know i think maybe people aren't used to like that that quality so they get taken aback by it. but yeah i definitely recommend trying it out because it's not like their others um i know amawaj are a middle eastern brand so they have a lot of smoky ouds and things like that so this kind of stands out in their range so if you want an amawaj if you want something if something expensive from amawaj but it's also likable um i would check out a uh, reflection man it's a good one yeah i should buy that one I want to try the um, the Fate Man. That one has like a lot of spice in it. All right. Um, next, I have. Let me pull this up real quick. I have Poison Girl. This one is super compliment getter, super likable. Um, this is Tonka Vanilla. Um, uh orange let me pull up the notes just so I, I refresh myself on this okay so it's got uh vanilla almond tonka bitter orange rose and then a bunch of other notes but i mostly get that vanilla like creamsicle because of the bitter orange you get like a orange creamsicle ice cream type of vibe from this fragrance oh. and it's super um youthful and sweet it works really well for me year round because of that orange orange just 
like in the summer, it's nice. In the winter, the um, vanilla comes out. And yeah, so this is great year-round compliment getter. Orange creamsicle smelly fragrance. So that's Poison Girl. Is this the EDT? The EDT has more of the orange vibe than the EDP does. The EDP is more Tonka heavy. And I'm not the biggest Tonka fan. So, mm. yes, yeah, so this is the EDT. Poison Girl. Awesome. Yeah, I know that one's good, and I need to try it again. I, I, I remember I've already told you, but I like the flank, I like the unexpected one. Okay, the next one I'm going to mention is one that I, when I met up with Dan the second time, this is a video of me and Dan together. It was during this video. I'm not talking about it there, but uh, when we filmed that video together, I spoke about this one. This is 1881 by Saruti. And I recommended it in a video and I actually had people coming back to me, messaging me. And they were also commenting on Dan's live stream that they had bought it because of my recommendation and they really liked it. So I'll mention it again. Hopefully people will try it. This is, um, I, have to put, I have to put up the notes for this one because I can't remember as well. So this is um, a 90s fragrance, but it kind of like hints at the 80s a little bit. Um, it gets compared to Boucheron Pour Homme. So if you've tried Boucheron, which I haven't, um, it gets compared to that. But I remember Dan telling me he has both. And uh, the 1881, which I'm talking about now, is kind of fresher than the other. So I'm I'm glad I picked this one up instead of the Boucheron. But it can kind of go either way because they're so similar. I think uh, both are really great options. But this one has Juniper uh, in the opening, which is obviously a fruitiness but it's um a unique fruitiness and it kind of reminds me of um kind of reminds me of cocktails for some reason i don't know why um but it's kind of a, it's kind of a change up from like your regular lemon and bergamot and stuff like that so you get fruitiness from the juniper there's obviously um <laughs> sorry this uh citrus lavender and carnation is in the opening as well carnation is used in a lot of old school fragrances which is kind of probably why this reminds me of an 80s one and it also has oak moss in the base so although it's i think a 90s release it's very similar to like 70s and 80s style um so if you like kind of like this one if you want something that's like a more modern take on an old school style i definitely ch uh, check out 1881 by saruti and this did get me compliments i even had someone um it was a woman asking me what it was like she wanted the name of it so she could buy it for someone else so definitely check out that one if you want like like i say similar to this something that's kind of like old school meets modern and you enjoy it yourself because it's classy but it also gets good feedback i'll check out that one I think you're muted. Yeah, you are. <laughs> there. Is that the name? 1818? No, it's 1881. So you just need 80, to change your name. 1881. Okay. All, all you need to do, Kai, is just change one of those numbers around. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Oh, there she is. How many have I done? One, two, three. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got um, Guerlain Ancelon's EDT. This fragrance is from, I believe, 2005. Um, this fragrance is a violet, heavy, um, whimsical kind of... It reminds me of, like, fairies or ballerinas. Um the pink liquid especially. Um, so the EDT is heavier on berries, um, like red berries and, um, you know, like blackberries, <laughs> blueberries. Um, but yeah, so this is a berry heavy fragrance. I mostly get like raspberry and violet, like powdery, beautiful violet. I love it. It gets compliments. You, you have to like powder to like this one. But um, the sweetness sort of balances it out. And then there's a tartness from the berries. So it, it's it's really good. And I love it. It's Ancelon's EDT. 
I've done all five picks. How many have you done? Yeah, I did all five. Okay, so we've both done all five. Um, so I guess after we've done that, I'll just ask you, like, what is your opinion on compliments in general? Do you care about them? And does it in influence, like, what you wear, what you buy at all? What's your thoughts on that? Compliments? Um, yeah. I really don't give a rip about compliments. Yeah. Um, I wear a lot of uh, old lady fragrances and get told that I smell like a grandma, but I'm okay with it because it smells good to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I say, the, the reason a lot of the ones that I picked, um, if you're watching a replay, the, the, all the ones that I spoke about, uh, the reason I don't own them and I was showing you pictures is because I don't really I don't really go for that anymore. I, I tend to wear things that get either negative feedback or just kind of like neutral, like people just are not very into it. So for example, I'll grab a couple I actually wear and I'll tell you how what reactions I get from them. Meow. Oh, you know what they say? Pets on a live stream always take priority. <laughs> That's a beautiful animal. So, like, Kay, like Kay was saying, like she wears fragrances, and people tell her that she smells like an old lady. I wear this. This is Shalimar Cologne, uh, which was originally targeted towards women. It's a very old fragrance, and dude, if I wore this. I'll get no compliments on this at all. Like, I just wouldn't. And if, if anyone did say anything, like, especially the guys I know, they would say I'd smoke an old lady. But the dent in it shows how much I wear it. So I'd be lying if I say I care anymore. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, it's always nice to get a compliment. So, for example, if someone complimented me on this, I would, I'd be very impressed. I'd think that's really cool. But if I do wear it, I'm obviously not searching for compliments. So that's kind of where I'm at now. And it's kind of interesting because for me, when I first got into it, it was all about compliments. And I think it's like that for a lot of people. They actually get into fragrances because of compliments and then they move away from it over time. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I dropped the link in here. So I don't really know how to drop Link like Dan does. Oh, I think I saw you do that, yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of minutes ago. By the way, what's your scent of the day? We didn't mm, even talk I haven't before. even sprayed anything. Me neither. <laughs> I, I'm crazy. I, I just like got up and then got ready, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm in a hurry. So, <laughs> all right, let me see. Okay, my scent of the day. Yeah, I haven't worn this one in a while. Uh, Saffron and Oris from Chorus before the reformulation. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of the fragrance or the brand. It's like $50 a bottle or $70 a bottle now. I don't know. They went up in price, but this was $6 at Ross. So it was like Shoot. Saffron. So I blind bought it and it's good. It's definitely saffron and orris. It's powdery, spicy. Yeah, I love it. Mm, yeah, I'm going to go with... Uh, this is a recent pickup for me. Lance Stunt to Guerlain EDP. Um, I actually shaved today, so I might actually hurt putting this on, but I don't give a crap. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I'm going to overspray it, so I'm just in all day. Okay, so if anyone's tried this, this has like lemon and LME resin in the opening. So you get a tiny bit of citrus, like a little bit of lemon. LME resin, which kind of reminds me of lemon. So there's a little bit of a resin, resinous touch. And then it's mostly just chocolate, chocolate, chocolate after that. Like it's mostly chocolate. Yes, legend is here. And uh, <laughs> truly, so there's, if, if a fragrance is just too, too just, just likable chocolate if that's kind of all it is maybe that could be boring but because there's a patchouli note in here that kind of adds like a masculine like a metallic earthy patchouli that adds like a, a touch of masculinity to this one um it kind of like stops it from going like super maybe too likable maybe too likable basic chocolate sort of fragrance 
So, um, yeah, I definitely, if anyone's not tried this, this is Lance Stumped Girl on EDP, a very chocolatey fragrance. YK is not here. I'm going to say hi to some of the people in the chat. Hello, fragrances and fur. Live stream goal achieved. You have Bilbo. Yeah, we have Bilbo on. That is definitely an achievement um, because um, I don't know. I feel like if if you have him on, it's like um, it's like a sign you've made it. You know, like you're an official live stream host or panel guest. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, we can't kick him off the way Dan does. We can't throw him off a building, um, so we can't entertain y'all with that. But um, yeah, it's good that Bilbo's here. I'm sure I could persuade Dan to show me. Well, he said he would show me how to do all this. So. Yeah. Yeah. A lucky charm. Yeah. By the way, hi Aussie fragrance. We haven't. We didn't say hi to you. Kay's clearly got some issues with a crying child, which is completely fine. Phil says, "Scent of the day yet to be determined. Too early, too lazy." Well, how early is it where you are, my friend? You're clearly somewhere. Oh, if you're in the US, you're you, that's early as well, though, isn't it? Because I know it's early for Kay. For me, it's half five in the evening, and I hadn't even chosen anything, so that's weird for me as well. Already said hi to Kai. And by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, the, the, the way you know whether you've got the real Bilbo in your live stream is if you look at his profile picture, there's a little blue tick. So that's that's uh, that's the Bilbo <laughs> verified. <laughs> that's the ve that's like the verified Bilbo. Because believe it or not, I think people were coming into live streams pretending to be him. And that's kind of a scary thing because once you're in, God knows what they could do, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. I'm back. Sorry. One of the uh, kids wanted Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> it's important things. Yeah, I've, I've been saying hi to everyone in the chat. We've invited people to come on. And we've had Bilbo, but yeah. No, Hi, no. Melissa. Oh, Melissa's here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, scent of the day is Fink's first date. I haven't heard of that. I've never heard of that. I have no idea what it is. Let's see. There she is. Hi, oh, well, she's awesome. I like her streams. Yeah. I've been I've been on Melissa's streams uh, a couple of times. Oh. Yeah, because I've known Melissa for months, so like, there's there's streams for months ago with me on them. By the way, Phil is just he he put a comment directed towards me. He said, "Lewis, you got the new bottle. Does it smell like the Listerine bottle? The Listerine bottle, I, I think it has a very similar label, but I know the bottle is like thinner and it's taller." Um, dude, I have no idea. I've never tried that. My guess is they do because I doubt they've reformulated it again. Because in the 2000s, you had the original Lance Stump de Guerlain. Then you had Lance Stump de Guerlain Eau Extreme, which was probably the closest thing to this. I think after they done away with that and they started making it the EDT and the EDP, they've probably kept it the same. That's my guess. Um, but Guerlain just change up their bottles a lot. So I don't think they reformulate as much as they change their bottles. They change their bottles like every few years. So that's that's all I can really say to her. See, like that. I don't know. I like it like this. To come on and talk. <laughs> Kai said, "Have you tried a Scada sentiment?" I have. It's in like the purple bottle, like the tall one. I think that's di that's discontinued. I'm pretty sure. If you're talking about the men's one, I'm not sure that I don't even know if there is a women's one. But the men's one I've tried, it's got like a blueberry note, I think. Or it comes across like blueberry. I think it's got juniper. It's got some sort of fruity note in the opening. But yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Sphinx is a brand new brand. Sister brand of Alexandria. Has a beard care company. 
Oh, that's and neat. I, yeah. Alexandria is a clone house, isn't it? Yeah. So is Sphinx a clone brand? Let us know if Sphinx is a clone brand. Okay, do you try many indie perfumers, like very small brands, like very small ones that no one's ever heard of? Because I don't really. I mean, I do have these ones. Mm. Oh, yeah, I remember these. I want to try them. <laughs> the Ecurial fragrances. I really like this one. It smells like chocolate. And it's super long lasting, but it's not like regular chocolate. It's called ruby chocolate. And it's got like a raspberry sort of touch to the chocolate. And mm. it's almost edible. This fragrance right here, oh, it's so good. I mean, I use it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it lasts all day. Mm. What about the other one in the house? That, that What's that other one you told me about? The picture. Oh, um, Blood Cherry Cordial. Uh, this one was like done during like a Halloween-ish for, um, it's supposed to be centered around a serial killer that bathed in the blood of young girls to try to make herself more youthful. And um, yeah, so this smells to me like like cherry cordials but like they were dipped in blood there's like a little bit of a metallic salty um edge to it so yeah it's really interesting i don't like metallic fragrances i don't like bloody fragrance guy said what the hell yeah it's weird yeah it's pretty weird i've actually smelled secretions back of the feet so i've smelled the weirdest of them all that was very, very, yeah, I that too. Not, oh, you have, yeah, oh, my friend. You get had a oh, you got a sample. Oh, okay. I didn't like it, <laughs> I didn't think you would. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit. Yeah. All right, we're at 32 minutes already. Okay, hey, our friend just posted. Let's see. Correct. They say it's not. I have a few of them. First date, Tabac, Citron, Vani, Black Anubis, and cannot pinpoint them being an exact dupe of anything. Okay. Interesting. Maybe they're not just not a clone brand. Maybe they're just affiliated with one, but they themselves just make their own stuff. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. What? All right, so do we want to wrap it up? Because let's wrap it up. This was this was our first live stream together, and I think yeah. it went really well. I liked the topic. Um, I think anyone who watches the replay is going to have like ten really good fragrances to choose from if they want to get yeah. like, noticed. So yeah, I think we should we should totally do it again. We should think of um should think of more topics and uh, potentially like invite other people to come on with us or something like that. I don't know. That could be an idea. But yeah, it, it was really good. And Ozzy said, well done. So thank you, Ozzy. Awesome. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. All right. Bye, everybody else. Are you going to be on Dan's stream later? Yeah, I'll hop on for a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you guys on Dan's stream later if everybody's watching. All yeah. right. Um, let's see. All right. Take care.